Welcome all. Uh, welcome back to the second part of uh, the lecture on Anjali. Uh, I call this second part Anjali, a filmic begin in integration and inclusion. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, there is no better place than education where Foucauldian frameworks uh, are so relevant. Think for example, our own situation. Well, uh, what is the kind of education we envisage? That is the kind of people we will raise if we want our children to be smart, then we will send them to schools that gives great skill set, survival techniques and so on, and they become uh, smart people. But if we want overall organic development, then we will send them to schools which just give that meaning moral education, uh, artistic education, aesthetic education, uh, uh, skill sets and then sport and then uh, education in care and so on. Well, uh, you might call that kind of education in, in that sense does not exist. Well, uh, it can at least be an aspiration. Okay, so um, uh, uh, learning environments shape people and they shape people through productive power. And that's why um, I thought about uh, this film as, um, uh, well, uh, uh, as a statement on uh, education, although schools are not directly involved. Um, church, family and the school, uh, as they say, uh, they are integrated units. Uh, we cannot separate them. I, I, I see this as a methodological problem to, uh, in seeing things together. Uh, first, um, what kind of education I am talking about? Um, I am talking about here special education because Anjali is uh, um, mentally disabled, uh, if you like, maybe autistic, uh, we will still do not know, but let us stick to the term mentally disabled, okay, some cogn uh, cognitive uh, condition. Right, here uh, there, there are, uh, for easy purposes, th let us talk about special education in three uh, uh, means segregated education, integrated education, and inclusive education. Uh, segregated education. Segregated education is what I went to as a disabled child. Um, I went to a school for the blind where all my peers were blind children. Um, Blindness of various categories, some had low vision, some uh, uh, could not see at all and so on. Uh, many of her teachers were also blind uh, uh, with some exception, uh, there were sighted teachers too, but uh, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, it, um, uh, the, the philosophy was uh, when you have an exclusive attention uh, say, uh, uh, when children are given exclusive attention to uh, in learning certain skill sets, say learning math, uh, learning braille, uh, interpersonal skills, uh, 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 experience of ta tactile maps uh, and so on, uh, you get the best of your childhood and you get exposed and you learn 
and you and you grow up as a fuller individual in a protective system and then come out as it were into the main world beyond the four walls and then you enter the mainstream so so uh, that was the philosophy in which i was uh, education educated uh, uh, the, the the segregated education um, uh, 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 can can potentially identify problem with individual uh, they 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 can also have assumed authority what david bold uh, calls assumed authority on uh, uh, children with disabilities let me give let me go a bit autobiographical today okay uh, i think that might uh, uh, help uh, me to uh, you know uh, demonstrate the case well uh, in, in in our school we were told that uh, uh, you children can do humanities say tamil literature english literature and so on because it is a ver they are verbal disciplines all you need to do is you know uh, get that stuff in your head through braille say poetry uh, prose uh, names of places maps and everything in your head once it goes into your head you have total authority on them on the other hand things like math they require special understanding science well it's all experiments and you cannot do that stuff well you know the consequence it had assumed authority in the ways we conceived of our future in uh, fields such as humanities social sciences and sciences so i was not uh, me and my cohort uh, most of us chose humanities and social sciences social sciences only some of us because again we were told uh, field work based uh, uh, disciplines may not be ideal for you because you cannot have authority over field around so you, you, you it's not as uh, simple as poetry where you can grab it into your uh, uh, memory as it okay so uh, mo most of us chose uh, humanities for the same reason so uh, segregated education can uh, do that but given uh, given uh, indian situation uh, most of my uh, peers came from not to not to not well to do families uh, they were from uh, poor family backgrounds uh, i mean this is the reality about disability in india i mean most of it is debilities because poverty leads to disability and disability can lead to poverty because of lack of employment and so on so most of my peers appear uh, came from poor families who cannot afford so uh, in that sense special education settings like the one like the one i went to uh, offer segregated specialist exclus exclusivist attention to pupils and there uh, that by allowing everyone to grow up together on an equal footing in, in many ways so uh, there are justification and denouncements both on segregated education model uh, well um, uh, these denouncements and justifications form uh, much of the narratives of deinstitutionalization uh, uh, in disability studies narrative what am i saying well many people go to uh, like me many have gone to specialist setups settings where segregated education learning and living uh, and thriving happens but all the more 
important. Those places can be a place of abuse, uh, human uh, rights, disregard, humiliation, torture and pain. Many of them can be potentially. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about myself, but I'm talking about uh, uh, many specialist institutions around the globe. It can be. So people who experience that kind of, um, um, you know, human indignity, when they come, they come out. They come up with uh, narratives of deinstitutionalization coming out. So that, that which form a significant form of disability studies scholarship where first person narratives uh, become prominent and important. Okay? Uh, for, for example, for that matter, any most form of identity based disciplines uh, espouse that uh, uh, so importantly uh, in our 21st century academic thinking. Right. So, but why did I bring this topic when the film does not? involve segregated education? Hmm. That's a good question you have in mind. This is the answer. Shekha, Chitra are um, asked to come for an apartment meeting. Okay? They go there. Uh, I think you should watch that anecdote. It's very nice. Uh, I put that on uh, given YouTube link to that uh, video. Okay? What happened? Uh, there are elders, uh, many family people and all. So they start a conversation. Shekha, uh, you know, we want to say something. Shekha says, hey, look, I'm very busy. I have three children. Ah, yes, yes. It's about your third child. So what about your third? What about third child? That is, look. I don't have time. Say it straight. You know, your uh, uh, child, uh, Anjali, is a mental case and uh, she, you know, she can be in one of those places where, you know, these mentally retarded children are. Mm. And he gets angry uh, and he physically, uh, behaviorally shows anger. Well, he does not manhandle anyone, but shows it in, uh, in his body language. Uh, of course, uh, Chitra is there to console him. Uh, and Chitra suffers uh, emotional things uh, in her own terms. I, in the previous uh, lecture, I was referring to how fathers and mothers handle emotional um, you know, burdens differently when they have disabled children. Okay, uh, we can, of course, you can read more uh, 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 on that uh, uh, by literature created by Bhargavi Dawa, Renava Dlaka and others. Okay. Right. Uh, now, uh, coming to the, the, the problem. Uh, there is a, uh, a, a the, the advice given by the neighborhood about institution for the mental case and the mentally retarded within codes. Talk they have in mind an institution, segregated setting, where these kind of children, this type of children are there. Or they, they are meant to be there and not amidst us. They are meant to be uh, out of sight, out of mind, there, out there, you know, no more near us. Not even in the neighborhood, out there. That's the problem with segregated education. So it 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 not only leads to uh, uh, punishment of a kind like imprisonment. It also creates social discourses. Power imagination where segregation means that which is there and it is for that kind of people. That's the point I wanted to make here. 
in in any event this movie came 1990 when uh, there was some kind of buzz about the notion of integrated education which is what is my next topic okay uh, integrated education for disabled children um, came uh, the act came 5 6 years ago years before the movie was released um uh integrated according to integrated education um uh, uh, uh the philosophy of integrated education it seems uh it assume that disabled children can be taken out of their uh segregated settings at least smarter ones and they can be uh um every now and then taken into um uh, uh mainstream schools or they can be educated in mainstream schools with some support uh through a resource center and so on so it's not full uh inclusion but a foot here and a foot there that kind of system but integration integrated education also assumed uh well uh, meaningfully uh, with all good intention that integration happens first in the community before it happens in the realms of classroom oh that uh, in that sense um the philosophy of integrated education was uh, certainly profound uh community integration does it happen automatically no how can it there needs to be community education first and uh, 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 even in that sense this film is a watershed what kind of community education that i am talking about or the film is talking about again foucauldian paradigm is very useful look foucauld F- foucault is not interested in i slap someone and 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 exercise power crude power is is interested in the way in subtle ways in which people influence each other and that influence is part of a larger power structure that is in circulation even uh, before they are aware of it uh, that is how that is how we create docile bodies so here look at the apartment they have they have elderly people who are disgruntled um, they are abandoned by their family uh, there are women um who are single who are facing marital abuse uh there are uh, people who came out of prison there are people who are uh, experiencing domestic abuse and so on so what is happening there is a larger power structure that is influencing people in different ways to become one individuals mind you this was in 1990s when nuclear families were developing and it was in the early stages of evolution and how uh, and its consequent community formations in enclaves and therefore integrated integration of disabled children in community will have that kind of angle about it so any form of community education will involve uh you know getting used to the idea that apartment uh, an apartment typical indian middle class apartment will have uh, children with varying capabilities and uh 
and this capabilities uh, will 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 instill a different kind of body language different kind of uh, friendship and getting used to that idea so uh, some uh, in other words proper care ethics uh, so um, uh, in order to under uh, uh, understand the movie's contributed contribution to community education i am going to quickly make use of uh, rosemary garland thompson's uh, you know uh, magisterial uh, uh, you know narrative on stairs uh, well i have already point, pointed out in uh, one of my previous lectures the subtle difference between gaze and stare okay gaze is a disciplinary uh, um, look uh, like the medical gaze uh, for example medicine authorizes doctors to examine our body with our, uh, it, it's an authority uh, similarly uh, you know uh english literature as a discipline uh you know uh, a, uh put us through some kind of lenses uh um disciplinary lenses that we are not aware of before right so similarly here uh there is lot of community staring happening at this child you know uh, in that apartment meeting one woman says you know our child is imitating this baby he like that and uh, and and we don't want our children to get that kind of language so uh, there is different kinds of stare going on uh, let me if not all let me at least count a few of stares that rosemary garland thompson is talking about she talks about stare like baroque stare you know like baroque art it is full of color pageantry uh, and uh, uh, immense uh, color outbursts baroque music baroque art uh, you might uh, uh, check on that about it was very popular in 18th century uh, uh, cathedrals built with baroque uh, arch uh, orientation will have immense painting and uh, drawings on the roof uh, that are extravagant um, declaring god's grandeur in that in in the in that sense but here she talks about baroque staring in a different way baroque staring is kind of extravagant looking uh for example uh, it is entirely possible that a disabled person walks in in an an unexpected place say a swimming pool uh everybody turns their head my god who is this person somebody says wow or somebody uh, uh you know somebody just refuses to do other things and keep staring at that person without any pause it's kind of a, uh thompson calls it rogue looking so it is possible that in, in this community uh, apartment um uh, where different uh, families live they they are unable to uh, you know uh, move their stare away from the child and and therefore making the child that's anjali uh, a, a, an object of uh a uh, uh, immense baroque stare uh, uh uh thompson talks about a stare like separated stare well it's kind of looking away yeah uh, a, a disabled person may provoke uh, uh depending on the person who is looking at the disabled uh some kind of maybe fear anxiety disgust anything it could be anything so they can just look away i don't want to look at this person so basically a uh, lot of people in the community they wanted to you know look away from anjali and her family 
So, what am I trying to say? Uh, a, a, a conversation of a kind that happens in the film, it, 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 it demonstrates how power through looks, body language, circulate through families and neighborhoods and how it can be reoriented. Well, um, now, uh, so integration can happen only when communities are ready for integration, just by calling education settings as integrated education, it's not going to work. The third com component, uh, third model of education, which is now called inclusive education, well, you know, inclusive education is a larger idea many, many millions of poor children, they don't have access to food, basic care, poverty prevents them from school, going to school. So, we, we have service Siksha Abhyan and other schemes that enable children to have primary education and so on. So, inclusive education is a larger thing. It talks about access to uh, education for all, creating a good ecosystem uh, for people, children in poverty, children with a disability, children who are, uh, you know, discriminated by way of caste, language, color, and what not. Okay. So, uh, 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 well, uh, Anjali is a beginner. Uh, uh, the, the movie is a beginning moment f f uh, in that sense, a public conversation about uh, these forms of uh, uh, education. But certainly, uh, 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 the, uh, the seed is, a filmic seed is laid there, but our larger purpose is to understand the application of Foucauldian method to film analysis using uh, governmentality, uh, using notions such as governmentality, docility, uh, uh, power, and uh, discipline, and so on, okay, for uh, uh, disability analysis. Well, concluding remarks. In the last, uh, uh, in the previous lecture and now, what I was trying to do was illustrate uh, how governmentality can be used as a literary and filmic analytic method. Uh, here I analyzed Anjali to, to uh, uh, um, you know, uh, to capture these moments of uh, personal and community education and through that the notion of power. Anjali certainly reminds us that more work needs to be done and more newer modalities of analysis need to be in place, uh, well, in the 21st century, 30 years after the film moment. Okay, thank you.